Yo, 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 what's up? Late night, late night. Well, it ain't late. It ain't late at all, man. It's still, well, if you want to consider nine o'clock late, then it's late. But that's what's up. I still do the damn thing for you guys. You know what I'm saying? You know, sometimes I just can't do, you know, do the interviews during the day. You know what I'm saying? We all driving. We all drivers out here. That's what we do. But y'all listen to me during the day. I do appreciate it. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. In today's podcast interview is a young lady. She's a truck driver. Been out in these trucking streets since 2014. About a five and a half year, six year driver from Memphis, Tennessee. You know what I'm saying? Memphis, Tennessee. I fucks with Memphis. Yes, I do. I got family down in Memphis, Tennessee. You know what I'm saying? So, but I can't tell you one thing. Don't, don't, don't mess with that truck stop over there on Lamar Street. We we don't want nobody to get shot. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Well, let me go ahead and bring to the show Desiree. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Desiree in the house. What's going on with you, little lady? What's going on? How you doing? Uh, it's going good. It's going good. It's going good. Just over here. Just over here at this. Well, I'm down the street from the loves right now. But, you know, I decided to come over here to this little pilot because there was a few more spots available. And I think I was able to get the last one. So, oh, okay. and, you, you know, truck parking, truck parking out here is a bitch. Uh, you should know that all like that, but it is what it is out there. What about yourself? Where, where, where are you at in the part of, in this part of the world? I'm in Ontario, California. Ontario, California. You down there where the sunshine is at. It's seven. It's yeah. uh, it's nine o'clock, nine twenty-two up here. What time is it down there? Uh, it's about six twenty-two. Ooh, you still got some time. Yeah, sun, sun is still out. Right sun there. is still. What's 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 the weather down there? Um, it's clear. It's just, I mean, the sun is out. And, I mean, the wind blowing. So, you know, it's still good. Uh, it sound- it's not too hot. Sound sounds like you underwater. What you got me on the speaker? Uh, no. <laughs> no. There you go. There you go. There you go. Sounding a lot better. I need a new phone, so please excuse me. I need a new phone. Oh, <laughs> uh, you say you need a new phone, man. What you you need a new phone or phone service? What what service you got? I got T Mobile. Oh man, that's my that's that's my service. No, I'm not yeah, gonna. I'm, T-Mobile I'm, always work with you, <laughs> huh? I said T-Mobile always work with you, so I be like, you know, uh, I be thinking about going somewhere else, but I'm like, I'm gonna stay tuned. <laughs> no, you know what? I might. I, I'm. I might for my data purposes. I might look into Verizon probably yeah. next year sometime. You know, because 2020 is a wrap. So. You know, probably next year I'll probably look in for data for data purposes. I might go with Verizon, but as far as T-Mobile, yeah. man, I I haven't had no problems. I mean, T-Mobile just been just been one hundred with me ever since I've been with them. Yeah, me too. All right, so I don't know. <laughs> All right, so let everybody know where you come from, Des uh, Desiree. Well, I hail all the way from Memphis, Tennessee. Um, born and raised in the Black Haven, East Memphis area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um, I moved. Ended up uh, relocating to Houston, probably. About five years ago. Oh, wait a minute. No, you did not say Houston. 
You did not say Houston. Yeah. I, I gotta I gotta bring I gotta bring it up. Gotta, gotta bring it up. You you said Houston. That's my spot. Yes, sir. Uh, gotta bring it up. What's up, Houston? Houston, Texas. That's it, you know, shout out to my Texas people down there because you know y'all rock with y'all boy. So uh yeah. how was it how how was it uh well how was it growing up in Memphis and then migrating down to uh Houston, Texas? Well, Memphis is it's it's home. I mean it's it's a it's a difference. Houston is is a huge city. A lot of different kind of people there, and you know, it's really it's really not like that in Memphis. So uh, I mean, it's changing, but um, I've always been I feel like a big city kind of girl. But you know, I got family. I grew up going to the country every every summer. So um, I mean, I don't. It's, it was a change. That's that's, but, I mean, I, yeah. that's where your family's from, Texas, or? And, no, most of my family is, is in Memphis and Louisiana and, um, like, Mississippi and stuff like that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But you was, like yeah. I said before, you was born and raised in Memphis, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. So how old was you when you went down to down to Houston? And what what was the reason? To, what was the reason of uh, transitioning down there? Uh, I was in my mid twenties, and I my good friend of mine was relocating, going to, with her family, and she really wanted me to uh, really go with her. <laughs> you know, I had always been talking about relocating, and, you know, leaving Memphis. So she was just like, "Why don't you come with me?" So I ended up taking her down there, and then I came back. And at the time, I was working as a pharmacy tech, and um, I ended up transferring my job to Houston. Okay. So you say a pharmacy tech, so for like Walgreens or Rite yeah. Aid or something like that. Yeah, and then I, I was working for like a specialty pharmacy. It's called uh, Express Scripts. Oh, okay. So and they like had. Yeah. They they had a they had a what was it a store or or it's like a um it's like a mail order pharmacy. Oh, okay. Like we would sit at like like cubicles and and do orders and stuff. And I was also doing security on the side too. Oh, okay. okay. When I when I did relocate. Okay. So uh that so how long how how long you was how long you was working there before you got into trucking? Uh, I would say I was doing security for a few years, but the pharmacy thing, probably a year. Oh, about a year. So it was yeah. so it was something that you that that you didn't like, but you just had to do because you needed uh you know you needed to work. Right. Okay. It was um it was just something. Yeah, I saw um, one of the community colleges was having a little, uh, they do like a three-month, maybe like a two, uh, probably like a two-month course. And um, I had already um, did a uh, surgical tech course. And so I was like, well, I'll try this because the school that I went to would have created a long story short. So I couldn't really, I couldn't finish. And so, um once I did the pharmacy thing and ended up relocating, um, <laughs> things didn't really go as planned. Okay. You know. Well, you know, life. You know, life is is never. N everything in life never goes to plan. I mean, you can you can make so many plans, but you also got to make uh, contingencies too. You know what I'm saying? If, if right. you know, you always gotta have a plan. You always have a plan B with your plan A, because if your plan A don't work out, then you have to have a fallback plan, which is your plan B. Mm -hmm. yes. So, 
That's right. So your plan, so your plan B in this case was uh, getting into trucking. You said, "How did I get into trucking?" No, I said your plan B was that you got that was getting into trucking. That was your plan B. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I tried to. Uh, I was looking at like some kind of food before I left uh, Memphis, but um, I didn't really get the fire really under me until I actually got to Houston, and uh, <laughs> I was like working at FedEx Freight. I was I was doing a little security job um, at the time, and um, I don't know. It was it was sort of like a a culture culture shock kind of when I got to Houston. I it was it was different. Everything was big, and you know, it was I was seeing you know everybody was riding nice cars. <laughs> I mean, it seemed like you know people were like hustling, like really doing their thing in Houston. So I was I was see a lot of lady uh, drivers come through, and like they were owner operators and. Mm-hmm. You know, they would just come through, and I would, you know, talk to them, and some guys, too, you know, like the FedEx workers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so they was like, you need to get out here. <laughs> so you, so the it's inspiration money. so the inspiration to get into trucking, you, you just, you know, you just saw, uh, you know, the drivers that came through, and, you know, you just chopped it up with them to get a – to get an idea of what life like is out here? Yeah. And then, you know, once I actually relocated, I was promised a raise and didn't get that. And, you know, was was struggling. I really struggled when I moved, when I relocated. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, why not just go and do it? <laughs> you say, why not so, go and uh, do it, huh? Yeah. So you so, so you say you, you, you did security. Uh, well, you you did security for uh, it sounds like a club. You you did security for a club, or was this security for oh, no. you know like for office buildings and stuff like that? Yeah, it was like that. It was like well, I was just sometimes I work overnight, and I was just basically sit there, you know, like warehouses or something like right, that. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to do security back but, in the day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, at this one I was working for uh Fit and Freight. You was and working was for just, you know, was working for who Fed. now? For FedEx Freight. Oh, you was working for FedEx Freight. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, and but you... like I was working for a company, you know, that they contracted with um I was just like sitting at the gate and just check it, the truck the FedEx truck field and, you know, um check the other truck, you know, I guess like the contractors, the owner operators that come in and right. You you know, you, you, sure was, you, you was you you was the guard at the guard house checking them in. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so how long how how long you was how long you was doing that? I think I did that when I got to Houston. I would say a good six months. Okay. And then after that, um, somebody had gave me some information. Uh-huh. And I um, I ended up quitting, and I just went to some job school at for, for, um, in Fort Worth. Okay, so what was what you 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 can't remember the truck driving school that you went to? Was it Roadmaster? I know I was actually looking at Roadmaster when I was still in Memphis, but I didn't end up going because they was uh, honey, they was trying to get to the I don't know. I mean, they was checking my credit and. Was, it was it was a lot. I don't know. I don't know what that was about. But I ended up going to the school I went to was C one. The school it was through a company called. What what was the school again? Oh, it's called C one. Seed one. S e e d one. Uh, C like the the letter C and then the number one. Oh, C one trucking school. Yeah. Okay. 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 It's in Fort Worth. Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> yeah, I went through this. Yeah, it was through this company called um, Driver Solutions, and uh, like they would get you a job offer. They got me a job offer with uh, USA Truck, mm-hmm. and then um, once they did that, then I, they would send you.
It was like three weeks. And we just went from there. Okay, okay. So, uh, so was it out of pocket? Did you did you pay out of pocket with uh with C one or or you got contracted uh with a company to pay for the tr- I mean pay for your schooling? Yeah, I did. I did the contract. The um, you know, then once I went to the company, they did like the tuition reimbursement. Mm-hmm. But I didn't go to the I didn't go to end up going to USA Truck. I went to um, US Express. Oh man, stop it, man! No, yeah, <laughs> no, nah, man, US Express, man. <laughs> Ooh, I, hey, no, 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 no hate on US Express, man. No shots, no um, no shots fired on US Express, man. I mean, you know, they're um. God! They're, you know, they're a good company. You know what I'm saying? I, I got my start. I got my start there. At U.S. Express didn't last long, but still, I got my start at U.S. Express. So definitely, no shots fired at, uh, at U.S. Express, man. So yeah, you uh, you a little fire company. So you, so you got your, <laughs> so you got your CDLA three weeks. You knocked it out. Um, and instead of going with USA Truck, you decided to. Go with US Express. Did did they come? Did they had a, a recruiter to come to the school and and gas you up about all that they had to offer, or or you you uh you did your research and you decided to go to US Express that way? Uh yeah. Well, my um cousin, her husband had went and got his CDL, and he was already driving. For a while, I think in Express, um, I was like, "Well, I'm gonna look into them." And so I did my little research, mm-hmm. and um, because USA Truck, I don't think they had a terminal in Houston, and um, I, th- I didn't like this. So I was like, "I just well, I don't, I don't over. I don't think I don't think US Express got a terminal in Houston. I think the closest one is uh." In Dallas, yeah, it's in Dallas. But then there's another one too. Mm-hmm. I can't freaking remember. San in- San Antonio. It's, I don't think that's close. I think it's. Um, yeah, I don't think they have one in. San I Antonio. can't they remember. Have one in Irving. Irving, there it is. Thank you, thank you. Irving, yeah. Texas. That's the one that's close to the that, that's close to Houston. Yeah, well, that's practically Dallas. That's like. I think oh, like that, with, oh, this close to Dallas. Time. My fault. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. My fault. Hey, yeah, you know. my my bad, y'all. You know, for for you yeah. U.S. Express <laughs> drivers, my bad. I'm not. You know, it's been a minute since I've been at U.S. Express. All right. You know, I I know the main terminal that I went to all the time, which was Irving, and I knew that was close yeah. to. That was either close to Dallas or close to Houston. I knew it was. I knew it was one of the two. All right, I'm. I'm just saying. Yeah, you, you know, <laughs> Dallas got about a million names for different little towns and stuff. So, shit, Texas, yeah, Texas, it's, it's period. <laughs> Texas, period, got a lots of little towns. I used to freaking hate going through 59, man. That was. That was freaking painful, man. I had to get off the highway and go down through 59. I was like, no, nah, man, take me down 35. Fuck all that. Oh, I'm going down 35. Right, yeah. and just get right into it, man. <laughs> hey, get off at 59. You One speed limit will be 50, and then five miles down the way, it'll be 45, and then five miles down the way, it'll be 30. I'm like, man, come on. I, enough of this shit. I'm de- enough of that, man. Yeah, so, uh, 59 is number small town. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, so rocking out with U.S. Express. Let me let me ask you this because you said you was in Houston. Uh, how are you still in? Are are you still in Houston now? I mean, you still live in Houston now. How how long all together since you left Memphis to uh, go live in Houston? Uh, you said how long it's been? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I left Memphis in 
the beginning of 2014. Oh, okay. Just about the same time you got into trucking. Okay. So yeah. what's this? Twenty what's this? Twenty twenty? So six years? Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Are you are you still down? I mean, do you still live in Texas? I mean Uh no, I don't have a, a residence in Texas anymore. I still I mean my license still says it, but I ended up, you know, putting my stuff in storage and you know, because I was always like on the road. I was, okay, so you decide to live the pneumatic lifestyle uh, with your truck. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, okay. A lot yeah. of a lot of a lot of young people doing that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, especially if you don't have no uh, no responsibilities or anything. You know, you don't have you. Right. You have any kids? You got kids? No, I don't have any kids. All right, so you don't have yeah. you don't have kids. You know that you. I'm I'm sure your car is in storage and your stuff is in storage. So you really don't have you know no rent. So basically, you just you know saving up your money. You 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 have a you have a goal uh, in mind for all uh, you know throughout this trucking adventure. You said you said a goal. Yeah, a goal. You you have a goal in mind. I mean, is there What's what's the uh what's the end what's the end results of this uh trucking thing if if you want it or is it or it's it's gonna be until you retire or do you have a plan well, there's that word plan do you have a plan or a goal set for you to you know you know when you come up out of trucking? Um, I would say at first I just I got in it because. I- I want but your phone break. I mean, it. I wanted to travel. There you go. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Go ahead. Yeah, initially when I got into it, I really just I wanted to travel and you know, make money and you know, I didn't I wasn't really thinking about the the part of, you know, not really have needing to have a place to live and all that. I just about my trust. I, I kinda thought about it but I didn't really get a full scope of it until I actually got out there. Where did we left off at? Asking me about um goals that I have for trucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So back at it. All right. Um are right, you still talking to me through the phone, right? You you don't have no headset or you got me on speaker or anything like that, right? No, I don't have you on speaker. Oh, okay. Yeah, you gotta make sure that the that the uh that the audio is crisp and clean anyway um so yeah what, what what's your goals for uh for 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 trucking i mean if any well before i actually got into before i jumped here first into it i was kind of um I was going through a transition phase in my life, and um, this was this was like before before I actually relocated to Houston, and then you know just going back into my childhood and you know young adulthood. Uh, I realized that uh, I'm transgender. Oh, okay. So okay. Okay. So back then, um, well, this, I mean, it started back in like 2005, 2006 area, I mean, uh, time period. And so, uh, basically just, you know, me finding myself and all that. So, so, so wait, 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 <laughs> wait, um, so you, okay. So you was born what? Male. Okay, so you was born a male. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was assigned male at first, and, and then you <laughs> then you transgendered into a woman. <laughs> Did it, am I saying that right? I mean, yeah. Uh, well, I. I oh, yeah, I, 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 I mean, you know, not not to say. I mean, you know. You you had it right. Okay, okay. Not not to say that you know you transformed like you know like a transformer like. <laughs> I need that transformer sound, <laughs> but uh, but I'm saying, 
you know, not not to say that, you know, I get, you know, I, I, I'm I'm trying to be, I, what is, what's 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 it called? Politically correct, I guess. Is that is that what it what I'm looking for? Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. All right, so so you uh, so how how old was you? How how old was you when you when you when you went through you know went through the 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 phase the the phase? That's good. Well, well, it started early when I was. Not the transition, but just me knowing that I was different. It was, you know, early on elementary school and, you know, middle school. But um, once I actually, you know, turned 18 and, like, I moved out and got my own place. And then I was able to really, you know, be myself and explore, you know, who I wanted to be in the world. So, um, you know, that's around around the time that I started to, you know, just just dress up and you know make up and all this kind of stuff and you know I always kind of have my hair done you know what I'm saying like <laughs> I like um so it was back then um and so and I didn't really know I didn't really know like maybe like one trans woman in my um not really in my city, but that I just knew that I, you know, could look to and stuff like that. So I didn't, early on, I didn't know that, you know, it was a possibility. You know, I just thought that, you know, I was, and everybody around me, they just kind of just thought that, you know, it was a gay thing. But So, so you, it really wasn't. So you knew, so you, you pretty much knew early, early on in, early on in your life that you, uh, you 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 was different, you know. I mean, I, I hear a lot of 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 people, you know. I hear a lot of a transgender, uh, gay, lesbian, you know. I hear a lot of them saying that, yo, I was born this way, or or I was, you know, I I was made this way. I was a I was a female in a in a male's body or I was a I was a male in a female's body. How did that how how did that start it with you? I mean, what you know, growing up in your teens into your into your adulthood, uh when did you, you know, you realize you start, you know, that you start feeling different? Well, I would say in like elementary to like going into like middle school. And, um, and sometimes <laughs> this is this is just something that I recall. I don't know. I would you know sometimes just put on you know put on a bra to like socks on my bra or stuff like that, and like I would have and just you know, little hair, hair pieces and stuff like that. But, like, my family didn't know. This was, like, um, middle school, stuff, around middle school age. Um, okay. And, you know, around that time. But I didn't know, you know, that I wanted to actually, you know, live as a woman, you know, be a woman or whatnot. I just, I was just doing stuff, I guess, you know, just experimenting or whatever. But, you know, I had... Uh, I come from like a Christian household, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. like I couldn't really like I tried to grow my hair and stuff like that, but my dad like he made me cut it and all this, so I couldn't really you know experiment early on like who I thought I wanted to be or anything like that. So that came later once I actually you know hit that eighteen, and I was like, well, I'm gonna you're, you're grown. You could you want to be in my own yeah. under my own roof. Yeah, yeah you, you wanted to be who, who you really wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, you know, growing right. up in a in a in a Christian household with 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 family with strong Christian values, you know, it's kind of it's kind of hard 
for, you know, a person of your stature to live up to that, you know. Uh, how how did your family how how did your family take it after they after you fully came out? Well, I feel like once it actually was going into play, you know, I was I was like on the road a lot, so I wasn't like I wasn't living there, I wasn't living there with them or. You know, they really wasn't seeing me a lot. But, you know, I knew that they wouldn't, I thought that they, you know, they wouldn't accept it. Like, I, you know, um, so basically I remember one time I was, I was going to deliver somewhere and I was just like, well, you know, when y'all see me, you're not really going to like what you see. So I don't, you're probably not going to see me again like that. So, oh, wow. I mean, it's just. Yeah, you, you, it was you, just like a. Um, it was a culture shock for them. You, you, you left as a guy, but came back as a girl. Well, I feel like I always tell myself like I kind of did prepare them because I wasn't just like ever like this hard, you know. what I'm saying this guy like I, I always had like a, I guess like an androgynous type of look. I always like wore like long hair where it was like you know twist or like braids or something like that or um like i i wasn't really wearing the weeds and all that but i was you know wearing like natural natural styles you know i would go to africa to get my hair braided and all this kind of stuff so it was definitely if you were paying attention you know if they were paying attention there was you know, something you know <laughs> You could look at me and be like, well, hmm, you know. <laughs> so I feel like, because I, I will always push the envelope. Like when I was younger, I wasn't, you know, me and my friends, we weren't scared. We could just, we would look how we want to look. And, you know, we would be prepared to fight whoever. <laughs> Basically, right. you know, you grew up in Memphis. So, I mean, you know, you have to, you know, sometimes you just have to fight for, fight for yourself. So, you know, I, I will always push the envelope. So, I feel like once it actually started to happen, you know, they, that kind of, kind of prepared them a little bit, even though, you know, I didn't really come out and say it. It was like, in my opinion, it it was kind of understood. So once I actually started to uh, go through the process and, you know, I would go home and like they would see me, it, it was a gradual thing, but it, they kind of got used to it. Um, quickly, I well, I won't say quickly, but quicker than most, I would say that. <laughs> okay, okay. So do so. But, um, so going through the so so going through the process of of um of chance trans transitioning. transitioning did you did you go through the? Well, let me ask you this, Desiree. I I I, I don't want to come off. As you know, coming to you wrong or anything like that, but did you did you go through the full process? I mean, everything from top to bottom is all female, or or is that too much to be asking? Ah, uh, well, I mean, even though it's this kind of business, um, I'm very secure, you know, in who I am, so. Uh, no, that that hasn't happened. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, um, okay. Yeah, and honestly, I mean, like all all trans trans women don't really want that. Like they don't feel the need to get go to the full, you know, go to the full extent of having the gender reassignment surgery. Um, me personally, I feel complete now. You know, like I just feel like. Like I don't, I don't have what they call dysphoria over um, that lower part of my body. Okay. Um, okay. I just always wanted to just transition, you know, to a point where I can move through society, um, you know, with no problems. Because before it was just, I didn't really have a lot of problems before, but it was just, you know, just people they see something different, and because they don't understand it, you know certain things can happen and that's, you know, you have to protect yourself and all that. So, so, um, so you, well, let me, okay. 
I guess, I guess my other question now. Uh, I, okay. <laughs> um. So, who, who do you, who do you, who do you, who do you rock out with? You, you rock out with, with men, or do you rock out with women, or do you rock out with both of them, or it doesn't matter. Well, I'm attracted to men. Okay. Okay. I'm what they I'm what they call a heterosexual transsexual. Okay. Um I'm not into girls like that. Okay. Um I e- even though you girls, you even know, though you still got the equipment to rock out with a girl, pretty much. <laughs> right. Okay, okay. Right. I got you. Like I you know, I don't know. You know, maybe you know, since I will say this, ever since I I've gone through the transition, I've I've been more open to it. Right. Because I'm, you know, I'm still thinking on whether I want to have a child um, of my own, you know. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm open to having a child, but, you know, I don't know about, you know, I, I just love me and I don't know. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. All right. So, um, so, do, so. But, oh, wait, I wanna, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I want to say something before we move on. You know, although I love men, that's not the reason why I transition. You know, I know a lot of people are not really uh, privy to, you know, like why trans people transition or, you know, like the reasons and stuff. But I did it because I wanted to be happy uh, in the long run. It has it had nothing to do with, you know, me. You wanted to be yourself. You know, tricking anybody right. or being, you know, trying to. You you wanted to be you yeah, you, you wanted to be yourself. You know what I'm saying? You wanted to be yourself. Right. It, I mean, ain't nothing ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, it's, you got to find your happiness. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, and, and you did. You know, you found your happiness. You know, you you contempt on you your your contempt. You know, you're a strong. You know, you're a strong woman now. You know, and um, no, don't let nobody say different. You know. Don't don't let nobody say different, you know, how how has being a transgender trucker, though? How how has that been for you? Because I I mean, you well, I want to I want to I want to say you are seen as a woman. So. You you say you wouldn't say that? No, no, no. I said you will be seen as a woman, right? I mean, that's you, you know, you that's right. that's how that's that's how you see that's that's how you how you uh see yourself. That's how that's your paperwork. You did you went and got the name change, the gender change and everything. So, instead of on your driver's mm-hmm. license is female, not male. Right. Okay, so so as a as as a transgender trucker, how has how has life been for you in that aspect? Well, when I first once I got you know into into trucking and you know dealing with like trainers and stuff like that, at first at first it was it was a little rocky because like my my information wasn't changed at the time. Mm-hmm. But um, once I got out of the cleaning phase and, you know, the name changed and uh, really once the name changed, that that kind of just stopped, like, you know, I, every... Like, stopped all the crazy, questions. You know, like, look at it. <laughs> yeah, I basically go into the receiver and I got to whip out my ID and I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Looking like a, a whole woman, but then I, and, you know, my ID is, you know, different name. But I will say the um, U.S. Express. I'm not sure, you know, how other companies are, but they did give me the option to have uh, a preferred name, like when they give me when they call you and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Uh, so at that time, you know, I, I did give them my preferred name, you know, which is just right. And when they call me, you know, I, I never really. 
heard anybody, you know, refer to me by my other name, my dead name. Um, so, I mean, I thought that was, I thought that, that was really good that, you know, okay. most of the companies are, they don't really care what you, what you look like and all that. Is just as long as you can drive, yeah, <laughs> as long as you can drive that truck safe, that's all they care about. Uh, when you came, when you came to U.S. Express, uh, was you, was you already, was, was you already full figure? I guess that's the guess. I guess that's the, the way to say it. Was you already feel full figure when you got the U.S. Express? When they asked you, um, you know, because you had to train. Did you, did you train with a guy or did you train with a girl? And if you train, and if you train with the guy, did of course did you let him know what your gender was while you was training? Well, well, I had three trainers. <laughs> <laughs> the first two were guys, and the last one was a female. So, and, what, what was the um, what was the experience with uh with with the guys? Well, I mean they. They knew what, I mean, I feel like they knew what it was because, I mean, my name wasn't, I didn't change my name at this, it, I, it wasn't changed at that time. Oh, so, okay. So what was, your, I mean, what was your name at the time? Yeah. What, what was your name at the time? If I, 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 I don't want to oh, say Oh, okay. It. Okay, cool. <laughs> no, no problem. No yeah. problem. But you was, but you, but you, as I seen in your videos, you know what I'm saying? You, you was full figured when you came over before you changed your name, right? Uh, somewhat. Oh, okay. You was. What you mean by that? <laughs> uh, well, of course you. You know, you, you, think, you 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 top heavy, as I could say, as I as I see. Well, yeah. I mean, was I, you was you top? That was one of my. Was you top heavy when you came in <laughs> when you came into U.S. Express? No, not initially. That was actually one of my goals. That you know, um, once I started driving, I had wanted to not just the surgery, but you know, just trans just transit it takes some money you of know, course so okay okay I, I got um, you okay 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 yeah. so throughout okay so my goal was to okay i yeah. i got you i got you i, I i'm following okay. you i'm following you so it, it's just yeah. like it's just like how you 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 came back home to your family you you left a guy came back a girl you came into trucking as a guy and then come back out of out, out of trucking as a girl am i am i am i good to say that yeah, somewhat it's, uh, except like the back the first part is for his leaving as a guy well I, I was living as a girl like I said back in like 05 to like 07 oh, okay. I, I okay, okay 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 yeah. okay okay I got you so it, it was an off and on thing until I actually decided to you know really go, transition. Yeah, go one go 100 percent. i got you i got you all right so yeah. so let's get back to the training so, so the first trainer <laughs> yeah so uh the first trainer he it, it was um i think he was haitian or something like that and uh it was i don't know like the first time I got got in his truck. I mean, I was, I would have like, you know, like basketball sort of stuff like that. But then as time went on, like I started to, you know, look more and more feminine. <laughs> and, um, you know, my name, it was still, it wasn't like changed or nothing like that. So like he knew what it was. And I feel like he, we kind of bumped heads. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was talking to this girl and um, this other guy who was a trainer, and he was basically telling me everything that I needed to know. And you know, this the, my trainer wasn't really showing me everything. Like I was just, it felt like I was just driving. Right, right. So, like, um, like they all, like they all do over there at US Express. You know what I'm saying? Like they all do. You know, we we yeah. we drive. So, they don't they don't show us how to back. They don't show us how to how to how to do anything. But just drive because they getting. They they get in wow. our miles, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, yeah. I get you. I get you. I mean, the my last trainer, the the lady, she's the one that really had me back, and she had me back at every day. And, you know, that's why I felt 
good about, you know, going out on my own because I was like, well, she basically, you know, got me comfortable with it. So, um, I mean, that was a good thing. That was just like, really, he didn't even, I don't even think I backed with him at all. What about the, what, <laughs> what, what, what about the second male trainer? What? How how long how long did that last? That sounded like that didn't last long either. Yeah, well, they didn't last because they just put me with him. He was just like a filler person because he was going to get ready. Um, he was older. He was going to get ready to go on vacation mm-hmm. or retire or something. And they just had me with. They just had me ride with him. Um. So I think at the time he was. I had learned on a on a ten speed, and he had an eight speed. And so I didn't know how to shift the gears. Um, and so I didn't even stay with him that long. Like, I got off his truck, I think, in Laredo, and I think that was it. And um, I had met this girl. I had met this girl, and I was, you know, talking to her about, you know, like, who, who I really was. And, like, I was, you know, in the process of transition and all that. Uh, and um, she basically... She had like a whole lot of clothes and like it was loose stuff, like a bag was still on it. And um, so I went in her truck and she just opened up like two suitcases, like full of clothes. And I was like, what? <laughs> and so she gave me all this stuff. And from there, I just, I just, what they call, went full time again. Okay. And um, so that was, that was crazy. And then like when I, I would be at the terminal. I think he was in Ohio. What's that? Spring, Springfield. No, nah, Springfield. That's the only terminal. Springfield. Yep. That's the only terminal yeah, in Ohio. Yeah, we'd be at Springfield. And Springfield <laughs> is like, Springfield is about 40, about 40 minutes, about 40 minutes out from uh, Columbus. I, yeah, and I think that was a nice time. I-70, too. yep. Yeah, Springfield is one of the, yeah, yeah, Springfield is one of the better terminals. That's that was the terminal where I went to. That was the terminal when I did my orientation and all like that. So I was out of Springfield terminal, but I okay. I upgraded. <clears throat> I orient I orientated 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 out of Springfield, upgraded up in Tunnel Hill. So where did you upgrade at? I remember Tunnel Hill. Hill. I upgraded. No, I upgraded. Did I upgrade? No, I upgraded at. Um, I upgraded Urban. Yeah, I upgraded at Urban because they had they put me. Is that that's where they give you your truck? Right? Yeah, everybody. Everybody loved up, upgrading at Urban. Urban. Urban at that time, Urban was was easier than uh, Tunnel yeah. Hill because the. The dude over at Tunnel Hill was a fucking asshole, though, for real. Luckily for me, I had the, I had the older gentleman that that really, really and truly gave me my chance. The 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 dude, the other dude, he was just a freaking asshole. That's all he was. Oh, man. So yeah, and then they put me in the um, because I learned on the ten speed and all that, they put me in a my first truck with the A speed. Oh, so you and, did get you know, it. So you did get a do. you did get a manual. Uh, they get yeah, yeah. they gave me an automatic. But th- I guess this this is back really? in what 20, 2014, right? Yeah. Uh, so this yeah, was so this was before they started transitioning in the in the automatics. Yeah. Well, I would say when I first started, I was in. I was in automatic. I mean, I was in manuals. Once I, I think once I went team, I was still in. I was still in uh, manual. But they they ended up, you know, phasing me out. At, I mean, at a certain point, I was only in automatic until I left. Okay. In um, the end of twenty sixteen. All right. So you. Well, yeah, I had to learn on the road. I didn't even know. I didn't even know how to shift it, and I was like, the A speed. I had to learn that pattern. When I was on the road, <laughs> yeah, you you learn you, you everything <laughs> you learn in school, man. Throw it out the window, you know, because when you when you're out on the road, it's it's a totally different beast, man. So, how long you was with US Express? Uh, about two years. Oh, okay, so you, you you rocked out with them for two years. Okay, that's what's up. Got your uh, two years experience. Yeah. Okay, 
Where where did you uh then I tried to go mm-hmm. I tried to go dedicated, um, but they didn't want to put me on the dedicated for some reason. They try to keep me on the road. So well dedicated. I had to the, throw them tools at that. The dedicated, you 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 wanted the Walmart dedicated, I take it, because that was out of out of Houston yeah. or out of Texas was yeah. was Walmart. Yeah. And I loved I loved New Canny. I love New Kenny Texas Walmart. I for that for that two weeks I made bank down there. So, but when yeah. they told me it was time to leave, oh, I hated that. Then they sent me over to that. How long? Hmm. How long did you work on the uh, New Kenny? Uh, New Kenny, I was there for about two weeks. Um. Yeah, I was there for about two weeks. I did uh, the first week. I did fifteen hundred, and then the second week I did uh, I did uh, nineteen hundred. The second week, yep. Then uh, I I was I was gunning for them to keep me for a third, fourth, fifth, sixth. <laughs> but uh, okay. but uh, my my fleet manager <laughs> my fleet manager took me off and and yeah I went back on doing bullshit runs so. But I, I only stayed, yeah, I stayed with U.S. Express for two years as well. So after U.S. Express, uh, where did you where did you go after that? Uh, I went over, I went to Arnold. Arnold. <laughs> I don't know, ask me why. Arnold. <laughs> Ain't that U.S. Express? <laughs> well, yeah, they, I mean, they still had a different name. What I was told is, they still own like a part of each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. Like well, I, I don't and think so, they. I don't think they own Arnold anymore. But yeah, at that time when I was there, it was Arnold and Mississippi, total. Mississippi Total or Total Mississippi or or yeah. whatever the hell that the name is. But now I know Arnold. Yeah. I think I don't even see Arnold no more. I mean, if I. I don't know. If either. I do, it's like now that I yeah, think about it. I don't even see Arnold no more. But I, I do see a lot of Mississippi Total though, or Total Mississippi or whatever the fuck the name is. Yeah. Um I thought it not too long ago. All right, all right. So when you step up out the truck, uh, Desiree, what what's the scene is like? Uh how 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 do uh, how do the truckers uh uh come to you when you step up out the truck? Uh, well, they always ask me. I, like, I've always did. You drive that? <laughs> <laughs> you drive? Like, if they don't see me, like, if they just see me in a truck stop or something like that, or if I'm just walking across a lot, I guess they think that I'm with somebody. Mm-hmm. Like, um, my husband or something like that, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I drive. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's like, well, from my experience, it's just like, it's like two type of guys. They're going to be like, you know, you drive, and, you know, they're going to either big you up, like, good job, or, you know, they just going to, like, see you that you drive, and they just going to look, mm-hmm. have a crazy, uh, more like a crazy look, but, you know, just like, well, what's she doing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's be a blow to that ego. So I don't know. I just. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Don't get me. Don't get me started. So, all right. So, <laughs> before we get on up out of here, man, I, I, I wanted to ask you what's what's the what's what's the dating life for you as 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 a as as a female transgender truck driver? Uh, dating. Uh, because dating is hard, dating. <laughs> especially being yeah, a trucker. Yeah. Period. But what? What? How is it for? Definitely. How is it for you, though? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's difficult. I mean, dating while trans is difficult. <laughs> um, um, talking to someone right now, but I mean, yeah. I mean, being on the road. I mean, that's one thing, and then. Just it's difficult because it's like you know you have to it's like so many things you have to weed out you know when you're 
dating, you know, as a trans woman, you know, you have to weed out the, the tranny chasers and, mm-hmm. you know, the people just, I mean, I guess that's, that's kind of similar to, I mean, to, um, cisgender women or biological women or, you know, I mean, anybody can be used for sex, but I mean, it's just like with trans women, it's, it's, it's another level. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you have to weed through a lot of stuff, or, you know, a lot of guys who, you know, are really not serious, but I mean, it can be, it can be difficult and frustrating, but I mean, I just, just do me. Basically. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. Just be trying to focus on my goals and. <laughs> okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. Um. So, Desiree, do you have any do do you have any um advice? Because there's there's a lot of there's there's a lot of uh there's a lot of people in the in the. Am I saying it right? LB. LGBT. L- <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. So for for the people that's in the oh, for yeah. the people that's in the community that's thinking about getting into trucking, what advice do you have for them? Because right now, trucking is 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 universal right now. We got we got lesbian couples that's 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 trucking right now. Right. Uh, you know the popular YouTubers, uh, Nick and Carla, and then there's uh, and then there's Kate uh, or the Katie, uh, Katie and uh, Eliante or however you pronounce her name, Eliant, Eliant. I I can't pronounce her name for shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you got some, and then you got some you know, some lesbians that I have talked to so far, you know, a, a couple of lesbians that I talked to so far, uh, be on the lookout for their interviews. Um, what advice, okay. what advice do you have for, for, for people, you know, that's in the community that's thinking about coming into, coming into trucking because, you know, you know what they say, they, they, you know, trucking industry is like a male dominated industry and, you know, women right. came in and broke the mold from that. And then now, and then now you guys coming in and breaking the mold from that. What, what advice do you got to give? Well, um, for, I was going to say like, as far as like the trans community, I live on speak for, for the trans community because I'm, you know, trans and I, <laughs> It's just, I feel like, um, and that's kind of why I, you know, put myself out there because I want to, you know, show uh, trans people, you know, trans women that, you know, there is, you know, a, a lot of different, you know, avenues. Like, you know, um, trans women, like we're not in the shadows anymore. Like we're coming, you know, I guess coming out to the forefront and, you know, um, I want to, you know, set an example and, you know, show them that, you know, this this is another avenue that you can get into and, you know, make some, you know, make a life, you know, mm-hmm. make make some money, you know what I'm saying, make a career, get your own truck, you know, your own company, you know, it, it can go as far as you want it to go. So, um, you know, I just like to, like to show an, another way, you know, just, whatever <laughs> um let them know that it is possible that you know with and there are companies that are you know lgbt friendly um that they don't really have any stipulations because you know a lot of a lot of trans people like they say they like they can't find jobs and stuff like that because of you know how they look and um how they identify so this is basically one of those things where you know this is it's pretty much open <laughs> okay okay all right so desiree um where do people can find you at what's your social media outlets okay uh, my youtube is des de Nero, d as in dog e z and then de Nero like money d-i-n-e-r-o like robert like, uh, like robert de Nero. Right? 
<laughs> yeah, Robert De Niro. Okay, okay, <laughs> but it's Des De Niro. Okay, Des De Niro. Right. And yeah, uh, what, what's your what's your Instagram? The Instagram is Chocolate Heaven. Uh, it's one word. Uh, okay. Uh, C H O C O L A T E, and then H E A. Wait, 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 hold on. C-H-O-C-O-L-A-T-E-H-E-A-V-N. V-N. 33? No, that's not you. That, huh? That's not you. Oh. Uh-uh. H-E-A-V-E-N. Uh uh-uh, uh, just V N. Oh, V N. Oh, okay, N. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, there you go. There you go. All right, hit that follow button. All right, all right, got that follow button going on. All right, oh, you, oh, you, 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 you. Okay, okay, I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> Seven thousand two hundred forty-eight followers. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, all right, cool. So you guys can catch her. On Instagram at Chocolate Heaven, that's V N, not E N, and then Des De Niro on YouTube. That's where you can find her at. All right, so make sure you go there, show her some love. Hit hit the subscribe button for her, and hit the uh, hit the follow button on uh, Instagram. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, Desiree. Thank you for coming on to the show. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Definitely, definitely. Awesome conversation. Awesome conversation. Um, yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. I, I just love this music. Sometimes it just takes takes me off my vibe for a minute. But yo, yo, that's that was Desiree, man. She she came on and uh and and just opened it up for the uh Hold on right quick. LGBT community and being a truck driver. You know what I'm saying? You know, life was hard for her in the beginning, but now it's easy, easy going. That's what trucking do. Trucking does that for you. Come on out. You know what I'm saying? Come on out and get with get with the trucking community. It's open. It's universal. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Nick and Carla. Shout out to Trucker Long Hair. Shout out to uh, to to everybody that's in the community, man. That's what's up. It's all about coming out here, getting your bag. That's what is. That's what it is. Desiree, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. If you guys. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with me, you know what to do. Hit me up on the text, 216-600-2090. Or hit me up in the Gmail. That's LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. Or bump over to Instagram. Hit me in the DM over there. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you guys watching on YouTube. I appreciate you guys listening to all of the podcasts platforms what where where am i i'm on google where am i i'm on apple where am i i'm on iheart i'm everywhere type in lockout men and boom yeah i'm right there so with that said if you like content like this yo you know what to do subscribe like uh comment share uh let's see yeah do all of that Hit me up. You know what I'm saying? And on that note, me and Desiree, we are out of here.